Well, now it comes time for us to look at the motivation and the origin and some intuition about cross entropy loss from a likelihood perspective. And we'll also talk about where the log comes from. So let's see where this all begins. What is likelihood? That's not obvious, but we need to have a little experiment in order to do this. So we're going to set up an experiment of picking candies out of a bag. Yeah, it's good to see that in an example. Yeah, so Design. let's do it. Let's say we have the actual training set. We pick five candies out. So pick your five candies. Yeah. Say two blues and or two reds and three blues. Something okay, like that. Okay, let's do so that. So basically, this is our training set. We just have, we just pick some candies. This is not the right, right spot to, show, to start. So I should write here. For example, we have uh, five samples from this distribution. One, two, three, uh, four, and uh, five. Right. And so First two reds. First one is red. Red. Second one is, I don't know, blue. Red, blue, and blue. Right. So now from <coughs> our training set, we can calculate probability of red. Uh, exactly. So if we just count the numbers, just uh, pro uh, probability of this distribution training set, we would have something like this. P of uh, red is equal to 2 out, out of, of five. 5 samples. Very and P, P of blue. blue is 3 out of 5 samples. Right. And so if we somehow make a measure of this, what would the likelihood be? We're just going to multiply the probabilities all together, right? Mm -hmm. And we could do that. So basically, let's say we have a guess about the, this uh, distribution. Uh, a bad guess is something like that. Q of, uh, I don't know, red is 4 over 5. And Q of blue is 1 over 5. And this is a bad guess. A good guess could be something like this, more similar to the training set. Something like Q of red is 2.5 over 5. And Q of blue is is two and a half over five. Okay, now what do how do the numbers work now for likelihood? Oh, we just missed this part. It's fine? It's fine, yeah. So maybe just write the bit up. Two and a half over, over five. five. All right, so now what do we do with these numbers? Are we gonna multiply two fifths? squared times three-fifths cubed and do the same for the others, right? And see where those numbers come out. Exactly. So if, we, uh, if this uh, model wants to describe this training set, let's see what's the likelihood. So the likelihood of Q bad which is uh, basically a vector is uh, uh, 4 over 5. And how many times this happens? It is 2 times. So squared. And uh, 1 over 5. And how many times this happens is 3. 3 times. So yeah. I'll just borrow that. So this is equal to 16 over 25 times 1 over 125. Okay, let's try the good likelihood. So, if we assume this model describes yeah. this training set, the likelihood would be something like Q of, oh, I can't, Q of good, uh, two and a half over five squared two times, and two and a half over five three times. Yeah, so this is really great because this is a half squared and this is a half cube. Exactly. So it's, so it's like 1 over 2 to the fifth, which is exactly. 1 over 32. 32. 
which is a lot bigger than this. Yeah, if you compare these two, this is already smaller than this, and it also is multiplied with a number less than one. Yeah, so, so this is bigger, so this is better, so this is more likely, and it's closer to the original uh, testing set, training set. Exactly. Well, that's good. So now we have a motivation for the uh, theoretical formula. So let's uh, erase this, and then in the next frame, after we do the erasing, which will take for another six hours. So please, if you're watching, don't go away. Uh, it won't be six hours. It'll just be a couple of minutes. And you can see by doing simple numerical calculations, you get some intuition about what the likelihood is so that when you see all the algebra in the next slide, you won't want to leave the room or hide your face because it does look a bit scary, but it's really just a symbolic extension of what we have just discussed. Now well, we're doing well here. Okay. Now, there's the formulas. So, Mohammed, will you take me through that first white block? Uh, so, this one, yeah? Yeah. So, this is exactly what we did in the previous slide. So, uh, these are the probabilities by the model yeah. for different classes. And NPI is the like number of that, those samples. The number of those samples. So, in, in our case, uh, for Q1, if it was red, that NP would be 2, mm -hmm. NPI would be 2, and then QI to the power of 2. Exactly, exactly. And then the other one would be times the other likelihood of blues. Mm -hmm. So we have that likelihood function. Now we're going to maximize the likelihood function. So we have a product of things. And I, with only two, it's easy, but what if we have 150? Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be complicated to find the derivative of product of 150 unknowns. Exactly. So basically, we have a guess, we have a prediction by QI, and we want to, and this is the, like the uh, likelihood of this uh, distribution based on this prediction, QI. Yeah. We want to maximize that. This is a product, we can't do that. So what we can do is to change it to something else. And uh, that's where logs comes in. So log, when we take a log of a product becomes of sum. And then we take derivative of sum, which is much easier. It's much easier. And also log tends to compress things. So if we have large dynamic range, we'll be able to see that dynamic range. And there's one final thing that the log function is. Do you want to draw the graph of the log function? Yep. So what kind of graph is it where it's always increasing? So it's somehow, so, somehow monotonic. 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 So what happens when we apply this transformation to this product, the, to the minimum? So the point is, if, we have, if uh, in the in this in this uh, the original function, the original formula, it has something like y mean, which is less than y for all the values. Yeah. If we take log here and log here, because of the monotonic behavior, sorry. Yeah, that'll be log. So it'll still be true. Exactly. The, the location, uh, the point that uh, minimizes this, that re, re, um, results in this minimization, results uh, to this minimum point, won't change. So if the, in the original formula the uh, minimum is somewhere here, even after log, this point won't, won't be changed. Yeah, that's right, because all this does is do a compression. So you can think of the compression as just crunching it down sideways, and that minimum will still get crunched down the most, exactly. and therefore it'll stay in exactly the same, same point. place. And actually, we only care about this point, 
we care about, and this point is the parameter of the model. That's and, right. And that's this the location is where we, of the minimum, and that's what, what we're the point looking, looking for, for in order to adjust our weights. Model, yeah, exactly. On our model. So that's basically it. So maybe I can also but, do that, uh, or it's here. But I think we still, oh, we, need, have done that. we still have to go back to the original cross entropy formula and look at it. So can you make a comment about this last equation? Uh, so that's basically the same. If we take the log of this uh, likelihood, it results in this expression, which can be simplified like this. Sure. And we are familiar with this uh, expression. This is uh, cross entropy. So basically maximizing the likelihood is equivalent to minimizing the cross entropy. Right. Okay. Great. So now let's see where that takes us. Having converted our like likelihood to log likelihood and showing that it's cross entropy, then let's look at our expression from before, our binary. Exactly. So this is what we had in the previous slide for uh, binary cross entropy, binary classification. So if in the, actually it's just the easy plugin, if uh, for the P and Q we have two labels, two classes, and just uh, plug that in in the cross entropy formula, we get the binary cross entropy. Since probability of one class is, uh, if, uh, if probability of one class is Y, the probability of the other class would be one minus Y. And that's how we get this binary cross entropy for two and classes. And that's what we had before. In the example we did earlier, yn, the desired output is y, and then the estimated was what we called a. Exactly. And so there it is. That's the formula. And uh, just a fantastic result to help us understand that where the entropy is minimized, that means the disorder in the system is minimized, so that's coincident with the extremum point, which corresponds to maximizing the likelihood or minimizing the entropy. Good work. <laughs> All 